So now we'll get started with um, Navigating Nurse. Uh, Rebecca did a great job of introducing you to Nurse and our mission and the systems and resources we provided. And Clayton just gave a great breakdown of how you are allocated or allowed, how your um, allow your allocation relates to your project and any other users on your project, and as well as introducing Iris. And so now we will just talk a little bit about navigating some of the resources that we do have available uh, for you to use, specifically in more detail accessing and navigating Iris, uh, submitting a user ticket, making use of miners. Um, most importantly, uh, connecting to our systems uh, in Perlmuter, um, and then just navigating the nurse homepage and documentation for useful tips, resources, and upcoming events and trainings as well. So, so let's first talk about uh, navigating IRIS. And as Clayton mentioned, IRIS is basically your gateway um, for being able to manage your accounts, um, on the on our on our systems, seeing how you're you're utilizing the resources, um, any type of allocations and projects that you are assigned to. So once you have gotten um, your account created and approved, you'll be able to access Iris, and you'll need to set up all of the appropriate mechanisms in order for you to be able to log in. And so once you start to log in, you'll log in using your nurse credentials or adding um, your um, uh, appropriate institution if you want to in order to access your account and log in. Um, so you would enter your uh, username and password here, of course, to access it. And you wanna make sure that you have set up uh, multi-factor authentication and uh, I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with MFA, but it's basically just another safety mechanism that we can utilize to ensure that your accounts and your, your data and accessing to our systems are protected. And of course, there are different ways or different implementations for multi-factor authentication. Not all are created equal, but um, it provides a... a, a, a um, avenue to ensure that your access to the systems are safe and secure. And so there was a, a security hack a couple of, um, a while ago into supercomputers in Europe in which they their systems were hacked um, for cryptocurrency because, and the reason that they were hacked is because they did not have um, MFA set up on those. So no security mechanism is perfect, but um, it always helps to slow down or stop um, any type of um, malicious actors from being able to quickly access your system and do damage. And so in order to uh, get access to uh, or set up your MFA in Iris, you'll need to install the authenticator. For us, we use Google Authenticator for you, and that's available um, via the um, Google Play Store or iOS App Store. Um, and of course, all of this is definitely within documentation. And this provides you with a unique six-digit code to allow for you to access uh, nurse resources. And so once you are in Iris, you would click on the tab that focuses on setting up MFA. And MFA, you'll need to set up uh, or add a new token. Um, a QR code will be provided to you very specific to your account and username for you to be able to access. And once you scan the QR code, it will populate with appropriate information. And from there, you're able to use uh, MFA in, in order to access Iris and essentially all of our systems. And so after you have MFA set up and logging in with it, you will go to back to the single sign-on page where you'll enter your um, password, um, username and password, and then your six digits from the MFA app for authentication for logging in. And so some things to consider if you are having trouble um, accessing your account, 
Um, typically, there are a number of different things that could go into play. So we'll just talk about um, at a high level, the most common, and that relates to uh, did you forget your password? Um, have you lost your MFA access? Um, if so, then there are links on the IRS webpage for you to be able to reset your password or if you've forgotten your username or as well as for um, for your MFA. And so if you can log into IRIS, but not uh, Perlmuter, you want to also make sure that you log in and then check the details, specifically um, make sure that you're assigned to a project, that your account is enabled, and um, your account is your account state is on active. Typically, those are kind of the um, the things that will prevent you from being able to access the systems. Okay, and so once you are able to log into Iris, you're you're going to be prevented presented with uh, an overview of your profile as well as your access to various um, accounts for your project. So you'll have be able to access, and this is showing the uh, my profile view with my just general information. And then at the top, you'll have the tabs that you can access for your CPU account membership, uh, GPU, any job details that you have in progress or have submitted, storage details, the roles for your account um, at Nurse, um, any of the Unix groups that you belong to as well, um, as well as uh, your token access and profile information, as well as the history for your audit log. And so when you click on the roles uh, tab in Iris, it will navigate you to the roles that you have, you're assigned to. This is my view as a consultant. And this has some of the different projects that I am assigned to within Iris. If you click on a project, you're able to see um, appropriate details um, related to that project. And so those details include uh, the funding um, resources and allocation, what office it relates to, what program, the science category as well. And then you'll have your ER cap details as well. And then any uh, project owners or PIs that are involved. So this is a useful way for you to uh, gain a little bit more insight about the project and kind of relate a lot of the um, information Clayton just gave you an overview of about accounts and allocations for your different projects. And as you, if you if you have multiple projects, um, if you click on them, it'll give you the same view. Um, as you work in Iris, you're able to change your user shell for when you log in. Um, if you prefer that Bash or or ZSH or whatever shell is your preference, you're able to edit those for when you're when you log into the system um, to a Perlmuter or any of the other systems as well. And so also, you can also add users to your accounts. Um, in Iris, if you um, are serving as a PI and you want to add a user to a specific account, uh, you can provide for the validation for the username, um, an allocation of the hours and the percentage that that would um, allocate to. So really this just presents you with a uh, kind of an overview and being able to navigate, understanding um, some of the, the roles and the access and permissions that you have available to you on our systems. Okay, so once you have uh, access to Iris, let's say you have a, a issue, a problem or concern and it doesn't even have to be related to uh, running a job on Perlmuter. It could be something related to your account or allocation. Um, and what you would need to do is simply uh, submit a ticket. And so you can easily submit a ticket um, using uh, ServiceNow, and you can access that at help.nurse.gov. Um, it provi it'll provide you with access to the portal where you'll have um, be, be able to access documentation, you can open a ticket, or you can do a request um, for anything related to 
um, accessing nurse resources. And that's important to keep in mind because uh, everyone thinks that it's just a, ma a, ma a matter of getting help with um, executing your application or running or using Perlmuter. But uh, for any type of uh, account issue or problem, we can you can submit a ticket in order to get it resolved um, in a fast and safe manner. And so an uh, important thing to keep in mind is that um, we have a number of different forms that you're able to utilize if you, you need to make a specific request. Like let's say you want to uh, request a increase in your storage quota. Um, if you want to uh, request any other type of support, uh, make reservations or whatnot, you are able to access that um, in uh, ServiceNow and submit those appropriate uh, requests to uh, generate um, uh, assistance from, from us to help you resolve in your issue and serve your request. And so getting good help requires that you file a good ticket. And, you know, I guess that is kind of a um, umbrella term of what is a good ticket. Um, and it's important to provide as much specificity as possible because um, as we mentioned, we, we get thousands of tickets every year that we work to resolve in a timely manner. Uh, we, we work to respond to your tickets within four business hours. And so in order for us to be able to troubleshoot your tickets expeditiously, we want you to provide as much information in as much detail as possible. And so some tips in order for you to provide us with this needed information, um, you wanna make sure you provide us with appropriate context of what caused the problem or issue, um, whether it's related to just accessing uh, accessing an account, uh, being able to uh, log in. Um, you know, sometimes you might be able to log in uh, through uh, Jupyter Hub, but you might not be able to SSH in and maybe your IP got blocked. It could be a number of different issues and providing us with as much detail as possible will help us to expeditiously resolve any problems. So you wanna make sure that you, um, if these are pertinent for the ticket that you have, any error messages that you have, um, if it's a specific job that failed, provide that job ID try to provide the path of appropriate rele relevant files so that we can access and take a look. This could be input and output, the scripts that you use to execute, uh, the executables and the source code, um, provide us a list of modules that you had to load in order to execute, and any steps that you took that led to the problem that you have. And that's our way of reproducing and trying to help you expeditiously identify what could be causing the problem. Now, again, a lot of times this might not apply. For example, if it's you requesting um, that we add a, a library or a new application for you to use on the system, then you know that request would be, a lot of this would not apply to something like that. And if you ever, forget any of this information, guess what? It is readily available for you within our nurse documentation. So you can click on this getting started um, link as well, and it'll take you to how you can, uh, you know, file what is needed to file a good ticket and any other questions that you might have too. All right, and we will continue on. Next up is my nurse. And so it's really simple for you to remember accessing um, My Nurse. Um, this will provide you with your dashboard and the compute systems, um, the status of uh, a status of our systems, um, documentation, accessing Jupyter Hub, um, data dashboards, and service tickets. And it's very simple for you to access. All you need to do is remember the URL, my.nurse.gov, and you can use this to access any of our available resources as well. And so with, within my.nurse.gov, you're able to see about any 
of your uh, with, within the dashboard, you can see information about uh, your disk usage as it relates to home and C scratch as well. You can review any jobs that have been su submitted, um, any CPU hours as well. Uh, you can get a system status update as well. Um, so this provides you basically with a, a snapshot of resources that are available and the current status of things. And so you'll also need to use uh, MFA to log in as well. Um, once you have that set up, it should not be a problem. You'll use your nurse credentials with MFA to access my.nurse. And so navigating within my.nurse, you can look at a number of different um, components such as uh, the backlog history, um, as well as the Q wait times. Uh, this is showing a, a backlog over time for Corey, which has been retired, but it provides you with uh, access as well as um, the Q wait time. So you can see uh, how expeditiously you could um, execute or submit a, a batch job for execution. Another useful tool that is also available in uh, my.nurse is our job script generator. Um, and this is there to assist you with creating your, your batch script to submit to Slurm for, for your application. So you can specify information like the system that you will use, um, the application name, uh, the job email that you want it sent to, um, the type of quality of service for the queue that you want to submit it to well, and you can specify the the time that you will need for executing your app for executing your your job as well. And so all of the, the these tools are available within uh, under jobs in my the my nurse per, portal. Okay, moving right along. Um, we're, we'll move on to uh, connecting to nurse, um, and all of this is available um, on our documentation that I'll go over. So, you know, if you have not um, gotten fully set up and started using the systems yet, um, this recording will be available as well as the links to accessing as well. Now, the traditional method for accessing our systems or accessing supercomputing systems has relied on using SSH. So if you have not used SSH before, what you can do is you will need to download an appropriate terminal program. Um, if you're on Mac or Linux, you can use um, a terminal that's already built in, um, or you could download uh, PuTTY as well, or another um, any other SSH program that you prefer to use in order to log into the system. Now, this is only one way. We'll also talk about accessing it through JupyterHub as well. And so once you've connected to, to, to connect to the nurse systems, you'll, you'll need to make sure you have MFA already set up as well. And so you'll access Perlmutter through uh, SSHing to it with your username, and you can do at uh, perlmuter-p1.nurse.gov or at solp1.nurse.gov as well. Uh, Corey is no longer available, so that is not pertinent now. And so once you're able to log in to uh, Perlmuter, you'll, you'll want to be able to, or once you try to log into Perlmuter, you might um, get a, a, a question or answer. And so what this means is that um, in logging into Perlmuter, you'll need to make sure that you have your RSA key fingerprint um, to make sure that your laptop or whatever system you're using can be recognizable by the system. And so this is in order to just be able to establish that you have access to the system. And so when you connect via SSH, you'll need to use your your password, whatever that may be, plus your um, your uh, your authenticator uh, code as well. And so, let's give an example in logging in. If your your password is 
this string of characters ending with the exclamation point. You would then um, append your six digit code from uh, the authenticator um, and enter that in order to access. And so keep in mind, nothing will appear as you type. That's normal. Um, you'll, you'll only get password and whatnot. So once you enter that, you will be able to, to SSH into the system. Um, and so you can use other options such as um, using the dash Y or dash X for accessing Perlmutter. And so if you use the dash X flag, that is typically what we use to display um, GUIs within your local environment. This will require for you to uh, install an appropriate server for accessing it, um, such as uh, XQuartz or, or Sigwin on Windows. Um, the thing about this, if you have experience with them, is that they can uh, run slow if you're using something that requires, you know, a type of visualization or analysis and, um, you know, Mathematica or MATLAB. It could be a little bit tedious and slow uh, for getting you to access that. Um, Another thing for you to consider is if you're tired of repeatedly typing it, you can use a SSH proxy to kind of create a short-term certificate if you're going to be accessing a system a lot. And so all you would need to do is um, create your, your script for that with your, with your password for you to, or with your proxy for you to use. And you can use this to access the nurse systems. And so if you go to our docs and go to MFA SSH or search for that, it will provide you with a, a guide process for being able to do that um, as well. Okay, let me get a pulse for time. Okay. Now, so we talked about being able to access uh, Perlmutter using SSH, but you can also access it uh, using our Jupyter Hub, which is available at jupyter.nurse.gov. And again, you can also access that through the My Nurse portal. Um, this allows for you to interact with the systems through a simple web browser. You can still use a terminal. Um, you can use any of the programming environments as well. Um, you can use a Jupyter Notebook for executing. So this provides for a very quick and easy manner for you to interact with our systems from Perlmutter to uh, storage and whatnot as well. And so again, it can be accessed through jupyter.nurse.gov. Or again, all you have to remember is my.nurse.gov for going to the portal. And so, you know, with running GUI apps uh, using a, using um, like Xquartz or Sigwin, it can be very slow for us to use. So we, we try to come up with um, an alternative for quicker access so that it does not um, degrade your performance for you. And so making use of that um, you can use uh, No Machine. And so No Machine is uh, another kind of X protocol, but it's more accelerated. Um, X protocol can make a lot of traffic um, over a network. And so over our fast network, if you're within Nurse, it's going to be okay. okay. But if you're connecting externally, then it's going to be uh, very, very slow. And so what No Machine does, it runs inside of Nurse, and that way you're sending less data over the internet. And so you're able to interact and do whatever uh, uh, visual visualizations or GUI interactions that you need to do quicker than just using a local X server yourself. And so what this does is that No Machine also removes uh, the weakest link so any broken connections would not kill your job as well, which if you've been through that before, it can be very frustrating. And so in order to set up No Machine, again, within our docs, you can uh, go in details into how to uh, set up and install. Uh, you'll need to make sure that you get a client for um, 
using no machine and it doesn't need to be a server or workstation. And from there, you can set up your connection and um, you can also use uh, SSH proxy for um, generate for key access, key generation as well. Okay. And so I will try to go through this a little bit quicker. Um, so, and again, um, for accessing uh, any events and trainings and uh, any talks that we might have, you'll want to make sure you make use of our nurse.gov webpage. And this can be done to navigate to a different events as well as trainings. When you pull it up, nurse.gov and go to, if you click on events, you can get an overview of training and other events that are occurring. It will list the, um, it is going in a kind of, is that descending down from the, the latest or the projected latest down to the current time. So October 18, 2023, that is the last uh, training that we have planned so far until another is added. Um, once you click on an event, it'll pull up the event details. So for example, like here, if I scroll down to click on new user training, which this is the lowest one here is October 12th. So it would be further down and it'll provide you to the web page with information, registration, the agenda and whatnot for any of those training events. Uh, you can also access the nurse calendar um, here, it'll provide you with the overview of different events that are going on. Um, so for here, like you have new user training highlighted for today, and then down below other different events like our user group annual meeting as well. Okay, another important um, thing to take into consideration is checking the status of our systems. And so within our live status tab, you can go to look at um, different components like schedule outages, or if there is, a, this will provide you with any um, immediate updates, as well as give you information about the current um, status of any of our systems, um, and as well as the compute systems or file systems, as well as storage systems as well. Uh, clicking on the schedule system outages, uh, tab link will also provide you with any of our scheduled out outages that are occurring within the future as well. So that way you can plan um, your uh, uh, your compute uh, time around those, those uh, scheduled outages. Uh, also within Nurse, you can go to the four users tab. This will provide you access to useful resources um, related to our nurse user groups, our monthly NUG web webinars, um, which provide you with um, the webinar date and then all of the details uh, about the agenda, as well as the recording and um, any PowerPoint or presentations are provided there. So when you go to NUG, um, click on monthly webinars, and then it'll list all of those webinars and you can get the, the details of each one. Okay, and so for the sake of time, I will just quickly go through this so that everyone can, we can take our break. Um, nurse documentation, it's available at docs.nurse.gov or you can access it through my.nurse as well. And it provides you with a, a number of uh, insightful and useful information for understanding how to navigate and use the resources from anything as simple as uh, resetting your password to access how to access the system, getting help, um, example job submissions, and tutorials as well. Um, it's re a really exhaustive um, conglomerate of information that is very helpful and to me is really uh, invaluable in helping you to understand how to efficiently and effectively use um, our systems. And so you can have access to a number of different things like our storage systems, systems um, available as well, and the architecture. If you have questions about uh, 
the size of the nodes, how many um, chips or cores are available within the nodes. You can explore the architecture. You can um, resolve any issues related to connecting to our systems using MFA or whatnot as well. Um, as well as tips on running jobs, um, example, um, job scripts, uh, as well as um, different examples of how to run interactive jobs too. If you have questions about some of the programming models that are also available, um, that information is also in our documentation. Um, a little bit later on after the break, Eric will be going over uh, breaking down some of the um, programming um, models that we do have available in environments for you as well. Okay, so that is everything for navigating and understanding NURSE.